In 2029, a mysterious global blackout led to decades of chaos and anarchy. The old nations disappeared and countless microstates known as tribes emerged, developing their own cultural identities. It's now 2071 and a trio of siblings from the Origines tribe is out in the wild hunting when suddenly a hover jet flies over them and crashes nearby. Keanu and Ilya want to go check it out but Liv points out it's extremely dangerous, so they should go back to their village and let the elder leader know first. Meanwhile in the Crows tribe, Varvara goes to see tribe leader Yavar to inform him her men detected an Atlantean plane crashing in the wild. Yvonne wants Atlantean technology to rule the continent, so he gives Varvara permission and resources to go looking for the plane. One of Yvonne's men warns him that this would mean breaking into the lands of the Crimson tribe and it could spark a war, but Yvonne doesn't care. Back to the siblings, they inform their dad and leader Jacob and what they saw, but Jacob forbids them from searching for the plane because the Origines tribe has survived by staying out of the affairs of outsiders. For now, the tribe will concentrate on throwing a party for Aaliyah's initiation. After a heartful speech, everyone begins celebrating, and Liv talks to Jacob to convince him they should check the plane because someone may need help. The next morning, Jacob takes his children and Mark with him to go to the crash site. When they find the plane, they notice the pilot is gone, and there are bullet holes all over it. The kids think the plane came from the old world, but the adults correct them, because they never saw a plane like this before. While everyone talks, Ilya looks around and finds a strange black cube that he keeps for himself. Jacob and Mark decide they'll investigate on their own and send everyone else back to the village. Ilya splits from the group and goes to his secret hideout, where he keeps all kinds of treasures from the old world. A noise suddenly startles him and he discovers that the Atlantean pilot is hiding there. The man is severely wounded but he keeps talking about the cube, explaining how important it is to his people. Ilya wants to go back to the village for medicine and promises to come back soon, so the pilot asks him to keep his presence a secret because too many people are looking for him. When he returns to the village, Ilya grabs a bunch of medical supplies and hides the cube in a chest. Unfortunately his siblings catch him red-handed and ask him to take him to the pilot. At the hideout, Liv takes a look at the pilot's wounds and decides they need to take him back to the village for proper care or he'll die. The siblings carry the pilot out while unaware that a crow named Gryata is following them. In the meantime, Jacob and Mark visit the tribe of Little Pra, but nobody comes out to welcome them. As they look around, they discover the whole tribe has been massacred even while they wore special protection they got from the Crimsons. Jacob and Mark look further and discover that together with the civilians there are also the bodies of Crimson soldiers. One of these soldiers is still alive and he explains they were killed by the crows, who are looking for the pilot. At the village, the doctor says she did as much as she could, but the pilot has suffered significant blood loss. Ilya takes the cube to him and the pilot explains it has a message about a dangerous threat coming from the east, so it must be taken to the Ark to warn his people. The cube mustn't fall in the wrong hands, and if Ilya wants answers about the causes behind the end of the world, he must help. At that moment, Jacob and Mark come back and warn everyone about the crows, he also wants the pilot to leave because he's a threat to the tribe. After sending a man to pass the message to the Crimsons, Jacob makes everyone grab their weapons to defend their territory. Suddenly they hear a scream, and they discover Gryata has arrived with Varvara and an army of crows. Jacob tries to offer the pilot in exchange for peace, but Varvara responds by tossing the head of one of the villagers. Then the crows consume a special gas before attacking, forcing the tribe to fight. As the village succumbs to death and destruction, Ilya goes to see the pilot, whose wounds have gotten worse. Realizing he doesn't have much time left, the pilot programs the cube to only respond to Ilya's eyes and asks the boy to take it to the Atlantean Ark. Ilya escapes with the cube and bumps into Keanu, who tells him the tribe can't win so he has to run away, Ilya proceeds to escape through the forest. Keanu fights the soldiers that try to follow his brother and is captured while Liv fights Gryata, who stabs her and leaves her for dead on the stream. Jacob is fighting Varvara, but he's distracted by Liv's loss and Varvara knocks him out. Moments later, Varvara gathers all the survivors to demand information on the cube and kills a man to try to make them talk. Keanu looks nervous and Varvara senses he knows something, so when she comes closer, Mark pretends to know something but only insults her. Furious, Varvara kills Mark, but when she turns to Keanu again, she likes what she sees and decides to take all the villagers as slaves. The crows leave with the villagers and only Gryata stays behind to search for the cube. Meanwhile Liv wakes up and is devastated to discover what happened to her tribe. When she hears Gryata moving nearby, Liv grabs her crossbow and hides behind a column, waiting for the right moment to shoot at her. Then Liv jumps on Gryata and threatens her into talking, Gryata explains the villagers were taken to Bratok, an impenetrable fortress. Gryata also asks Liv to finish her, but at moment Crimson soldiers arrive led by David, who promises they're here to help before another soldier knocks Liv out. Moments later, Ilya takes a break to try to activate the cube, but it isn't working. He makes his way to Little Pra and finds a mysterious truck outside. He decides to search the building for tools and when he hears a noise, he discovers he isn't alone. Ilya tries to hide, but Moses finds him anyway. The man explains he collects and repairs electronics from the old world, so Ilya shows him the cube. Moses confirms he can fix it and sends the boy to get grab some tools, but when Ilya comes back, Moses is left with the cube. 
Ilya runs out of the building to try to follow the truck only to suddenly be attacked by a crow, who threatens him as he asks for the cube. Fortunately Moses comes back and shoots the crow before telling Ilya to get in the truck, and they escape together right before more crows show up. Moses apologizes for his betrayal and gives Ilya the cube back before offering a deal. He'll take the boy to someone that can actually repair the cube, and then they'll sell it, splitting the reward 50 to 50 between them. Ilya says no and leaves the truck, but Moses follows him and points out Ilya doesn't know where to go, not to mention the crows may catch him easily on foot. Seeing no other choice, Ilya agrees to work with Moses. When Ilya asks about the blackout, Moses explains he's sure the Atlanteans knew about it and decided to keep it to themselves, now their technology is the only one that works in the new world. Liv wakes up in a hospital in the Crimson Tribe with her wounds healed. David explains they had to knock her out so she wouldn't learn of their location, but she's safe with them. When he asks about what happened, Liv tells him about the pilot and the plane, but not about the cube. David sends his men to look for the plane, and when Liv expresses her wish to save her family, David tells her he wished they could enter Bratok as well but they haven't found a way in yet. Afterward, Sam shows her around the Crimson Stronghold, which is the last area belonging to them before entering Crow territory. Crows are lethal killers but they keep a strong sense of honor, they never lie or go back on their word. The only way to enter their territory is as a slave or as a crow. Liv asks for permission to talk to Gryata, who hasn't said a word to anyone so far, but Liv thinks she may talk to her because she isn't a crimson. David agrees as long as Liv shares how to get into Bratok if she gets that intel. Liv visits Gryata, who explains they killed all those people because the cube equals great power. Gryata doesn't think Liv can enter Bratok alone, but Liv tells her she'll free Gryata if she promises to take her along and help her free her family, which leaves Gryata thinking. Afterward Liv tells David she'll work on slowly getting Gryata's trust, and that she'll give David all the information she gets as long as he promises to help her family when they finally attack Bratok. Meanwhile Keanu and the other survivors arrive at Bratok. Varvara orders her men to take Jacob to Yuvar as a gift, and all the others are taken to the factories where they make Wolk, the upper the crows used to fight. If anyone tries to steal Wolk, then they shall be killed. Keanu is given new clothes and taken to the nasty quarters where all Slavs are kept together as if they were pigs. Later, Everyone is put to work and Keanu befriends Linus, who shows him the ropes. If anyone dares to say anything or stop working for even a second, the guards will beat them up without mercy. The only way to escape this place is through a baj, which consists of a slave fighting another slave to earn their freedom. To fight in a baj, a slave must be chosen by Varvara. Liv goes to see Gryta again and tells her she's been accepted as a prison guard, but Gryta stays suspicious. Growing frustrated, Liv tells David of a plan. They could pretend she's escaping with Gryta, and once Gryta shows her the way out, Liv can send a signal to the Crimsons to find them. David refuses because it's too risky and Gryta could escape for real. Sometime later, Crimson soldiers return from their expedition with the pilot's body, but they couldn't find the plane because the crows took it. Afraid that the crows may have the cube, David urges Liv to get information from Gryta faster. The next time Liv visits Gryta, she brings her food and tries to ask a few questions, but Gryta sees right through her and grabs Liv, hurting her for believing she'd buy her act. Afterward Gryta asks David for help again, but he cancels the deal and asks Liv to join the Crimsons, which she refuses. Later, Liv discovers there's a tunnel outside the building that takes her to Gryta's jail, giving her an idea. She goes to see David and accepts to join the Crimsons as long as she's allowed to see Gryta one more time with David in the room. The two of them go to the prison and Liv shocks David by stealing his gun and hitting him with it before tying him up to the cell. Then Liv frees Gryta using David's key and guides her at gunpoint to the tunnel she saw earlier. Liv leaves first, and when Gryta follows her, she pushes Liv to the ground and takes her gun only to immediately give it back to Liv to confirm a crow keeps their word. As they make their way through the forest, Liv says she would do anything to save her family, and Gryta points out she would make a good crow. Liv considers the offer and asks where to go next, so Gryta finally gives her the details on what road to take to sneak into Bratok. At that moment Liv takes out a flare and shoots it at the sky to alert the Crimsons of their location, since all this has been part of her plan all along. The soldiers arrive and capture Gryta, but when they're about to arrest Liv too, she reveals she has the information. When they return to the stronghold, David compliments Liv for her courage and the two of them get frisky together. At the factory, Linus accidentally drops his tools while he works, and gets beaten up by the guard for it. Keanu comes in his defense and the guard beats him too, throwing him to the floor in the process. This allows Keanu to notice some slave stealing some wolk. Later while everyone is sleeping, Keanu only pretends to be asleep and notices those same slaves giving the stolen wolk to the guard. The next morning, Keanu asks Linus to get him a meeting with Varvara. Hours later, Linus calls Keanu to a private area saying Varvara is waiting for him, but this turns out to be a trap. The thieving slaves want to silence Keanu and one of them attacks him by throwing him into the pool, so Keanu has no choice but to defend himself. Using a shard he finds in the water, Keanu kills the slave right before the guards arrive to arrest them all. Keanu is taken to see Varvara and he uses the chance to tell her what he saw, but the guard denies it. 
Varvara believes her warrior over a slave and orders Keanu to be killed as punishment. In the meantime, Moses takes Aaliyah to see Amina, who meets them with her weapon out. She's furious because Moses left her after making lots of love promises, and she only puts her weapon down when she sees a child. She agrees to fix the cube after Moses promises her 10% of the profits, but after she's done, she can't seem to make it work. Aaliyah takes the cube and activates it by scanning his eyes, this makes the cube show them a giant hologram of the pilot in some weird area. Unfortunately the cube shuts down before they can understand what they're seeing. Amina takes a new look and discovers the fusion module isn't reparable, the only person who could get them such a rare piece is Bracker, the man behind the old trading post in the southern regions. Moses doesn't want to go to Bracker because he owes him money and they'll be kicked out, this makes Ilya furious and he stomps out of the room. Moses follows him and Ilya shares this is important to him because of his family. Amina decides to share a rare tablet from the old world plus a bunch of other artifacts for Moses to pay his debt, and the three of them agree to leave together. However at that moment a bunch of crows shows up, so Amina goes to fight them alone to give Moses and Ilya the chance to escape. They run to the truck but a crow jumps on them, Moses manages to push him off with his weapon before driving away. In Bratak, Keanu is taken away to be killed, but the ceremony is interrupted when Varvara comes back because they found Wolk in the dead slave's body and now she believes Keanu. The guard must die instead so Varvara makes him do it himself, then she sends Linus and the other thief to their deaths while she orders Keanu to be sent to her estate. Moments later, Keanu arrives at Varvara's luxurious home, where he meets Duyat and the other slaves that live there. These are Varvara's favorite men and they're kept here to keep her company, not to fight in a baj like Keanu wanted. When it's time for dinner, Keanu puts on the new uniform but refuses to wear makeup. He also refuses to eat or make conversation, which frustrates Varvara and excites her at the same time. Varvara throws Keanu's food to the floor and makes another slave eat it like a dog, then she sends everyone away except for Keanu, which makes Duya jealous. Keanu is taken to Varvara's room and his clothes are taken by force, then Varvara pushes him to the bed to take advantage of him while keeping a blade against his body so he won't move. The next morning, a jealous Duyat congratulates Keanu for getting Varvara's attention by being impertinent, because the others thought she was going to punish him. However Keanu isn't flattered it points out they're still slaves with a slightly different job. The next day, Varvara takes her slaves to a special party that Yavar is throwing with his inner circle, which Varvara wishes to be part of. Yavar congratulates Varvara for recovering the plane, but reminds her the cube is more important. As he walks away, Keanu is shocked to discover Jacob has become Yavar's slave and Yavar likes to beat him up just for fun. Varvara tells Keanu that she likes him and tonight he'll get a special treat, they get to see a baj. The fight between slaves is brutal and when the winner is decided, she gets her freedom by becoming a crow and choosing a new name. When they return to the estate, Varvara asks Keanu about Jacob, but Keanu pretends he was just his leader and nothing else. Then Varvara asks him to tell her sad stories of her childhood because they excite her. This time Keanu pretends he wants to spend the night with her to start gaining her trust. Back to Liv, she's given a crimson uniform and a weapon of choice, then she joins David to hear about the plan which David hasn't told the higher-ups about. When the team's ready to go, they suddenly find the exits blocked by soldiers from the capital and Cameron, the leader of the Crimsons. Cameron is against warmongering so he considers David a traitor for going against Crimson principles. David immediately says everyone here is under his orders and only he gets arrested. After driving for a while, Ilya and Moses stop to rest and meet with a family that's escaping from the east. Just like the pilot said, there's a threat called Black Swarms coming to Europa. Everyone that sees it dies, but the family can't offer more details because their English isn't very good. Sometime later, they make it to the trading post, and the guards aren't happy to see Moses. However they quickly allow him to come in when they learn he's come to pay. Ilya and Moses are taken to see Bracker, who has an office with a huge collection of technology from the old world. Moses shows the rare tablet Amenia gave him, pointing out is much more expensive than what he owes and asks for a module in return. Bracker's suspicious of such a request and makes his guard grab Ilya to search his bag, finding the cube. He decides to keep it to himself and kicks Moses and Aliyah out. Meanwhile Liv continues to work as a prison guard and brings food to David, who explains Cameron must be stopped. Their leader wants to negotiate a truce with the crows, but David thinks they're butchers and will only take control of the other tribes. David asks Liv to kill Cameron in order to save her family, promising that her men will help her. Moments later, Liv has a secret meeting with Sam, who brings him a special poison to put in Cameron's drink. The morning after the party, Keanu overhears Varvara sending reinforcements to find the cube. Determined to save his brother, Keanu asks what it takes to be in the Baj. Varvara is insulted by the implication that she would give him up and takes Keanu to her training room, where she proceeds to easily defeat him in battle. Keanu claims he wants freedom but he's afraid to die, and Varvara points out a real crow would never be afraid to die. Later Varvara announces she'll be dining with Yavar and takes Keanu with her in the car while the other slaves travel in another vehicle, making Duya jealous again. Keanu tells Varvara she deserves to be part of Yavar's inner circle to make her like him more. When they make it to Yavar's place, he immediately scolds Varvara because the plane didn't have anything valuable. While they chat, 
Keanu notices his dad working around and pretends to need the bathroom to meet him in secret. The men reunite with a hug and Keanu explains he's trying to get a Baj for freedom, but Jacob asks him not to do anything reckless. On their way back to the room, Keanu discovers Dewey had saw everything and threatens him to buy his silence. Before they leave, Yavar tells Varvara that he's chosen a different lord to become his seventh member of the inner circle. On their way home, Keanu tries to comfort her, but Varvara pushes him away with fury. That night, Varvara chooses to be with Duyat so Keanu can learn a lesson. A few hours later, Keanu is called to Varvara's room and is shocked to find Duyat dead on her bed. Varvara decides Keanu has to die too and gives him a choice, he can do it himself or she'll massacre him as she did with Duyat. Keanu accepts the blade and starts applying his own sentence with courage, only to be suddenly stopped by Varvara. She's impressed by the fact he's finally not scared of dying anymore and decides he's earned his baj. Back to the Crimsons, Liv is called to have a meeting with Cameron, who thanks her for the info she got from Gryata. Liv gets the poison ready to put in the glass, but then Cameron begins offering a very heartfelt speech. He explains the Crimsons never attack, they defend, and David goes against that. It's important to him to keep peace in the continent and stop the bloodshed. Liv can see he's right, and she's shocked to hear that Cameron wants to trade Gryata for her family, inviting Liv to come along for the negotiations. Liv accepts and puts the poison away. In the trading post, Ilya doesn't want to give up yet and comes up with a plan. Moses insults and taunts the guards, and when they begin chasing him, Ilya sneaks into Bracker's office. Bracker finds him and asks for his plans for the cube at the same time the guards bring Moses as well. To save him, Ilya finally explains everything about the pilot, the Ark, and the threat from the east. To prove it, he activates the cube, which shows them the same hologram, the pilot arriving at a strange land and discovering the black swarms. The cube then shuts down and falls into the hands of Ilya, who explains he needs to take the cube to the Ark to save the world and get the answers behind the old blackout. Bracker's obsessed with the catastrophe and allows Ilya to go because he wants answers too. Moses and Ilya leave the room and Moses bumps into an old flame, so he gives Ilya the truck keys to get it started while he takes care of the girl. Furious, Ilya activates the cube and confirms it can guide him to the Ark, thus he leaves the keys in the truck, thinking of escaping alone. At that moment a bunch of crows arrive and enter the building. Violence and screams can be heard inside, causing the cube to enter combat mode and become a gun. Ilya tests it on a wall and makes huge damage, this makes him brave enough to go save Moses. Inside, most people are dead. Bracker's barely holding up because of some serious wounds, and the crows are threatening Moses for information. Ilya enters through the back door and shoots at one of the crows, then he makes the others drop their weapons. Moses reunites with Ilya, but when they're about to leave, the cube begins running out of power and returns to its regular form. The crows get ready to attack again, so Moses and Ilya run away and escape in the truck. Once they're far enough, Ilya confirms the cube is saving power but it can still guide them to the Ark. Back to Liv, she discovers she still has the key she used to free Gryata, so she gives it to Sam and tells him about the secret tunnel they can use to rescue David. Then she joins the rest of the team to leave with Cameron and discovers she'll be traveling with Gryata, who isn't happy to see her. When they make it to the border, the Crimsons show Gryata to the Crows, who refuse to negotiate. Cameron uses that moment to show himself and treats the Crow captain like an actual person instead of a puppet, gaining his respect. They come closer to shake hands but suddenly someone opens fire from the surrounding buildings, killing everyone they see no matter the tribe, including Cameron and the captain. Liv rushes back to free Gryata and escape together, but on their way out Gryata is hit by a bullet. The women hide inside a building, but it only takes a few seconds for a soldier to find them. It turns out to be David, who came here with his men to kill Cameron and become the new Crimson leader while blaming everything on the crows. Liv turns down David's offer to join him and David should kill her for it, but he can't bring himself to do it, so he accepts to leave without her. Meanwhile Keanu's taken to take his Baj. In the arena, he's devastated to discover his opponent will be his own father, so he refuses to fight. Yavar laughs and tells them that if they don't fight, they both will be killed. This prompts Jacob to start attacking his own son, pointing out it's better for only one to die instead of both. Since Keanu still refuses to fight back, Jacob grabs his hand and forces him to kill him. Everyone celebrates the victory, but Keanu is broken inside. After the fight, Varvara admits Dewey had betrayed him, and she didn't kill Keanu as she should have because this was a greater punishment, but also his salvation. Moments later, Keanu is taken to his initiation as a crow. Varvara gives him the name of Tarok and makes him have the special gas to be an obedient warrior. In the meantime, Liv waits until everyone is gone to leave the building with Gryata, who in the end dies of her wounds. While Liv wonders what to do, she's found by the Femin tribe, who invites her to join them. Moses and Ilya make it to the beach, but they find nothing there, so Ilya decides to toss the cube into the ocean. The cube floats above the water and summons a giant box that opens as an invitation. Ilya and Moses make their way inside, ready to get their answers. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.